Now about three weeks ago we were contacted by some very clever people here at Filton who said they had a new machine that could make virtually anything out of powder and to prove it they said they'd make us a bicycle. Dave Harvey takes up the story. It may look like the surface of the moon. Actually, the guys here can make pretty much anything out of this. It's the raw material for a completely new way of manufacturing. Development engineers here in Filton use lasers to set the powder solid in thousands of paper-thin layers. It's actually nylon plastic, and the theory is they can build any shape of solid object you could imagine. Until now, it's mostly been used to make really specialised engineering parts. And look at these. These are the hinge brackets on the A320's engine cowling. You haven't seen the A320's engine cowling before? Yeah, that's the problem. The technology is fantastically clever, but it's only properly appreciated by the experts. So Andy Hawkins and Chris Turner have set themselves a challenge to use this technology to make something that's both intricate and everyday. Uh, we're going to make a bike. And this is actually going to be a working bike? Yeah, the wheels will have a, a hub through the centre with all the bearings incorporated and they will come out of the machine fully functional as moving parts, essentially. You make it sound so simple, but this could be quite tricky, couldn't it? So it, it is a technical challenge. I mean, it, it, it definitely will be that with all the moving parts, but one that I'm pretty sure we can succeed in. It looks awfully complicated, all this, doesn't it? But it actually works on a very simple idea. Every 3D object is just a pile of 2D slices. Let me show you what I mean with fruit. Ta-da! Look what I made. But how do you do this with a bike? Essentially, it's the same process, but in microscopically thin layers. The machine spreads a fine dusting of the nylon powder, heats it till it's almost melting, and then uses invisible lasers to melt the powder in a precise 2D shape that sets solid. Another layer of powder, another slice added, and so on, until a tenth of a millimetre at a time, a 3D shape is built. So Chris and Andy have to start designing their bike on screen. The non-moving parts are relatively straightforward. You can see we were able to basically kind of um, model the, the, bearing, the ball bearings in space. And hang on, hang on. You were actually growing this with the ball bearings already yeah, in there? Yeah, so it's all, it's all designed in situ, so each one is essentially um, hovering in space and then we build it up layer by layer and getting this section of it right is, is critical to the success of the bike. So, Their first attempt at this all-in-one wheel hub and bearing is about to come out of the machine, buried in a pile of nylon powder. If it's too loose, the wheels will wobble and rattle. Too tight, well they won't turn at all. Um, I think it looks a little bit loose. Um, the nice thing is they're all moving, they haven't seized, so that's a good point. Once the bearing's out, it becomes clear it's far too loose. It's disappointing, but this is the first attempt, so... That's your brain talking, what's your heart saying? Um, my heart's saying it looks rubbish, <laughs> and that we need to improve it. So, I hate to use the expression, but it's back to the drawing board now, is it? Yeah. Whilst Andy and Chris battle with their bearings, I'm finding out just how far this 3D printing technology has come. You don't have to have an aircraft factory. You can do this in your living room. This machine's made by a company in Clevedon. It's a much simpler version of the same idea. It costs about the same as a top-of-the-range laser printer. Great for engineers, great for designers. Is this really going to be in people's living rooms, though? I mean, your living room's really a design workshop, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, you, you say that, but... I, I like to think of the analogy of the, the 2D printing world where 10 years ago nobody had printers in their home. They, they would always take their designs to a copy shop. And as the prices come down, uh, people are able to buy their own printers and lots of people have their own 2D printers. And it's exactly the same thing happening with 3D printing. So now as these printers are becoming more affordable, you can have the convenience of being able to print in your own home. And you know, make your designs come to life. 
Back at Filton's aircraft factory, most people are heading home for the night. Well, not Andy and Chris. They've had two weeks to fix that dodgy bearing, and time is running out. Well, it looks as if they've cracked it. That is good. That's a lot better than last time. The fact that we have a successful part now, it's, it's really good. So things are moving forward as we planned, um, unlike last time. So. <laughs> Over the following week and a half, all the remaining parts are built. Everything you need to build a bike. It's test flight day. This is the big day. The day we find out if this revolutionary new bike actually works. Except there's a hitch. <laughs> The high-pressure tyre on the front wheel has burst, shattering a section of the nylon rim. It is a bit demoralising, really. You know, with so much effort in, we we're all weekend we were in, <laughs> in trying to get the finishing touches to the bike, kind of all in place, and uh, thought we pretty much had it nailed, and then turn up and find out we've got a piece of the wheel missing. And time is running very short, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> time's been running short all the way through, but um, you know, hopefully we can we can continue and we'll we'll make a new wheel. Um, use the benefit technology to do that, but yeah, it's just it's just disappointing, and it brings spirits down a bit. But you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get it done. So back again. Feels better today, though. So you must be pleased, are you pleased? Yeah, we're, we're pretty happy with the way it looks, definitely. It's a <laughs> prototype, but um, but you know, it's a great first step, definitely. We're really happy with what we've achieved in a short time. You're a bit nervous about riding it. Yeah, <laughs> very nervous, um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. He's done it. It's going. That's fantastic. Superb. I think that's amazing. Good on him. Well done, mate. So it went round then, the yeah. wheels and everything. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was a little bit wobbly. It's not as a. Uh, not as tight, everything is as tight as it should be, but it's the new new use of the technology that's really exciting. So it's kind of kind of challenged the way that a conventional bike's made and you know perhaps it doesn't perform as, as well as a conventional bike at the moment, but this is just a prototype, you know, the next the next one will be far better. So this is to try and connect with people who don't necessarily know anything about the technology or know anything about the aerospace industry. So yeah, it's a really good way of demonstrating. Big congratulations to the engineers at Filton. Of course, we didn't doubt them for a moment. And Dave Harvey will be looking at other West Country innovations all this week on Points West. Well, that's it for tonight, and indeed for this series of Inside Out West. We'll be back in the autumn, but until then, you can keep up with what we're up to on Facebook and Twitter. So, from me and for the rest of the Inside Out West team, thanks for watching. Good night.